going to show you how to take this Visual Builder application and run it from another web server. So first let me show you the basics of this application. It gives you a list of employees. You can sort them, for example, by last name. Click on an employee, see their details, update information. For example, we can change the phone number here. Click Save and the information would be uh, saved in your database with the right information. Um, this application also has a chart, etc. The application itself is feeding the data from a REST service. So here's the REST service. In our case, this is a REST service that is hosted in a Java Cloud service instance in Oracle. And in order to get this application to work from another location, without relying on the VBCS backend, one of the things you would want to do is make sure that you're not using our authentication proxy when you're accessing REST services. So in our case, we're going to do a direct bypass for the proxy, which means that any call from the client would go directly towards the REST from the browser without going through the VBCS backend. The other thing that you're losing when you're not using the VBCS backend is um, integration with the identity cloud. This means that one thing you would want to do for your web application is in the setting, in security, you would want to allow anonymous access over here. Once you did those changes, you can push those into your Git repository. Now, this uh, application is connected to a developer cloud service instance. We can see the instance here and we can do a refresh uh, and we can see here's our commit which fires up a build job. So the build job is defined of course our inside here under our build jobs and you can click on it to see what it does. So the build job is hooked up to our git repository where our application sources. Then it's going to execute a grant vb build command to actually build our application. It's also optimizing it using Uglyfy. One thing we added here is an after build step. The after build is a, an artifact archival type of step, which is what you would find here in the list. Okay? And what we're doing here is we're taking everything in the build directory, the zip files, and we're archiving it. Right, so if we look now, we can see this job just finished. And um, you can see the log if you want to. And if you click on this job, you would have access to the artifacts. And the artifact here is uh, the zip files. Okay, And those are the zip files that VB creates um, as you run the grant build command. The one that we're interested in is the one called the optimized zip, which we are going to now download onto my own machine. This is now available for me in my download directory over here. I'm going to extract the zip file and I'm going to rename this directory to be amp app local. Now that I have this directory, I'm going to copy it into my Apache instance. So on my machine, I have an Apache instance uh, with web apps and there's a bunch of examples that come with it. And I'm going to add to the same directory my extracted application. If we look at the AMP app application, one of the things we'll see is there's a web apps directory, web app, and then an index HTML. This is the actual uh, HTML that will be the entry point to our application. So if we want to now run our application, we can go to our uh, local App. So this is on our local host and we're accessing the directory and the index HTML and here's our application being served from our local Apache instance. And this is of course can be web logic or anything else. A functionality is basically the same. You can click on an employee and go for example and update their salary or any other field here. So this right now works against our remote REST service. In fact, if I'll go and invoke the network inspector okay 
and we'll do a refresh here. Okay, you would see the calls to our REST service, which are going against our remote IP address. So what we want to do is now switch it to work against another server. In my case, I have a local web logic instance running the same REST service, but locally on my own machine. So I can do this, for example, by opening the folder that has my application. So we'll go one level up, open the full folder. And I'm going to do a search here to replace a string in a file. So I'm going to replace the string that points to this uh, server and this uh, port with my local server and my local port. Okay, so let's see if we have any occurrences. Yeah, we have several of those. We'll replace all of them like that. And um, we should be able now to go back into our application and reload the page. Okay. If you look at the REST services now, they are invoked from my local machine. This, by the way, means that I can go over and disconnect my network connection. In this case, turning off my Wi-Fi. My application would still be able to run because everything right now is running off my local machine. The web pages are served from my local Apache. The REST services are served from um, our WebLogic instance. And if we update data, it updates it in my local database as well. So this is right now running against an Oracle database running on my own machine. So now you have a complete VBCS application running on your own infrastructure outside of the Oracle Cloud.